Lord, just give us a, a, a deep revelation of your word, oh God. Lord, give us a desire, oh God, to hunger and thirst after your word, oh God. Just to seek you even the more, oh God. And Lord, you get all the honor, God. You get all the glory. And I just thank you for our pastor, oh God. Lord, I ask that you just lift him up, oh God. Lord, take him into your storehouse, oh God. Give him deeper revelation of your word, oh God. Continue to give him vision and direction, oh God. Lord, you order his steps, oh God. And we just thank you for it right now, God. Lord, we bless you for our first lady, oh God. And we just give your name all the honor and glory that's due to your name, oh God. Lord, I just ask that you just saturate this place with your presence. That you be pleased with everything that's done here, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For you will get the glory, God. You will get the praise, oh God. You will be lifted up, oh God. You will be exalted, oh God, and we just say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, we bless your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all of the honor. We search high and we look low. We couldn't find nobody, come on. There's nobody greater, nobody wiser, nobody bigger, nobody stronger. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Anybody really need him on tonight? I said, does anybody really need him on tonight? Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, just put your hands together like this tonight. Come on. We don't sing the old one tonight. Come on. Come on, say you're wrong. All I need. Come on, every breath. Every breath you breathe through me. Come on, you're all I need. You're all I need. Let your rivers flow. Let your rivers flow through me. Come on, you're all I need. To you just wave your hand on tonight. Come on. You're all. You're all I need. Come on. He's all. Yeah. Come on. Come on and say you're all. You're all I need. Every breath. Breath you breathe through me. You're all. All I need. Let your rivers flow. Rivers flow through me. Come on. You're all.
a war cry. Say, oh. Somebody don't give up. You're too close. Well, I pray for you and you pray for me. Oh 
trust your plan. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul says yes. Ah, that's a good place to tell God yes. That's a good place to go ahead and bless his name. That's a good place to go ahead and just say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anybody's soul says yes? Anybody's spirit says yes? Ah, my, my, my. God, we bless you. God, we thank you because you are our God. You are a mighty God. You are an on-time God. So for that, God, we just bless you. Will you give God one more great big hand clap of praise all over the building, even out in virtual world? Amen. Will you give God one more great big hand clap of praise on tonight? God, we thank you. We thank God, amen, for our music director. We thank God for the praise team. We thank God just for, for loose hands and for loose lips and for, for loose feet, amen. That's nothing holding us down and nothing holding us back from praising him. Thank God for always setting the atmosphere that we can come in and just worship him. Hallelujah. Whether it's a Sunday morning or a Tuesday night. We thank you, Lord, for being in the building. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing your spirit to be here with us, God. So we just bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. On tonight, on tonight, on tonight, amen. I know um, last week, First Lady taught Bible study, amen. And the week before that, I said we were trying to close out the book of Nehemiah. But even as I was doing my personal studies, amen, God didn't want me to leave it where it was two weeks ago because there was something that... Um, we neglected to, to, to see. And so I said, thank you, Lord. And we'll, and we'll close out the book of Nehemiah on tonight, amen, with the word from the Lord. And, and pray that you don't miss what this was all about. Because in our prior three or four weeks of teaching, we was teaching about, about Nehemiah building the walls, restoring the walls. And, and if we weren't careful, we weren't careful, we would think that the whole book of Nehemiah was really about walls, Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. I'm, I'm already in my lesson. Because in all of the teaching, in all of the lessons that we've gone through in the book of Nehemiah, even though he was rebuilding the walls, it really wasn't about the walls. Even though they were bringing things up out of the rubble, it really wasn't about the rubble. Even though they were um, putting back into place the things that was broken down, it really wasn't about the things that was broken down. Pastor, where are you going on tonight? It was really about the people. Makes no sense to rebuild walls if you don't rebuild people. Makes no sense in having places that look good and people that look bad. Makes no sense in having stuff that's standing up and people that's laying down. So don't get caught up so much in Nehemiah saying, God gave me a vision to rebuild the walls. Because on tonight, God said, even after they had rebuilt the walls, the people lie in ruin. The people lie broke down the people lie in rubble and God said as we close out this book of Nehemiah he don't want you to think that that's where he left his people he don't want you to think that after we rebuilt the temple rebuilt the gates and rebuilt the walls that I just left the people in ruin even though in the process I was teaching them how to build and fight teaching them how to do things that God had called them to do but I don't want you to think that I left them where they were glory to God. So on tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this platform. We thank you, Lord God, for this space. We thank you, Lord God, for this time to impart your word to your people. So God, bless now those who would hear your word. God, bless now those who are even in um, virtual land, Lord God, that this word might be a rhema word in their life, Lord God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you now for what you will say and what you will do. 
on this occasion. These are all blessings we actually give daughters in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. If you would grab your words real quickly, amen, because I don't want to hold us too long on tonight, amen. If you would grab your words real quickly, we thank God, amen, for the minister who are in the house on tonight. We know we had some that had some other occasions, amen, that they called in and said, Pastor, I got this and I got that. And so we thank God, amen, just for your obedience to keep us informed of your whereabouts. But in Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, hallelujah, in Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, read the first three verses but I'm going to cover that chapter in depth Nehemiah the 8th chapter but they're signified by saying amen for those of you who are in virtual world give me a thumbs up a smiley face or a fire emoji something to let me know you track it amen hallelujah and in the 8th chapter of the book of Nehemiah that very first verse it reads thusly and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the streets that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the Sabbath month. And he read therein before the streets that was before the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. I want to talk to you tonight, amen, and I will close it out of the book of um, Nehemiah from the topic, Give Me the Word. Glory to God. Give me the word. Hallelujah. As we close out this study of Nehemiah on tonight, I want to say that if you missed out the symbolicness of the walls, then you missed the whole book of Israel, I mean the whole book of Nehemiah. The walls weren't about them being lying in ruin. The walls wasn't just about them being having to be rebuilt. But the point of the lesson was there were people who needed to be rebuilt. There were people who needed to be revived. There were people who needed to be rejuvenated. There were people who needed to be restored. So even as Nehemiah did to the walls, God would have it be done to the people. Let me say this from the sense of where we are. People in this world are broken. Just like the gates and the walls were broken, people are broken. And Nehemiah wants to deal with our brokenness because whether your brokenness is like mine or whether it's like somebody else, everybody is broken in some form or another. I know most folks will tell you, it's a pastor, I got it all together, I ain't got no issues, I ain't got no problem, but that's just on the surface. If we really begin to dig deep into your life, somewhere there's some brokenness. Whether it was or were or whether it is or whether it will be, brokenness exists because, okay, let me, dig, let me digress. We were born in brokenness because of the original sin of Adam, all of us are broke. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us because of his sin, he said that we were born or shaping in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. Hallelujah. That's in Psalms 51.5. I want you to know that even though you're good where you think you are, there are still some brokenness in you. And I just wrote down a litany of some things that you may want to think about when you say, well, Pastor, I ain't broke. I'm good. Because I know you are broke, I want to give you some confidence that you don't have to stay broke. Amen, somebody. We are broken in the sense of what? Insecurity. We are broken in relationships. We are broken in marriages. We are broken in hatred or self-hatred. Some folk don't even like themselves. Okay, okay. We are broken in hearts, meaning we are heartbroken or heartache. We are broken in past hurts and shame and some of the things that we did and we are embarrassed about. We are even broken. Some of us are broken in uh, embarrassment. Hallelujah. Mm. Abandonment. Okay, let me go. Can I go a little deeper? Betrayal. Hallelujah. Some people are just broken because they are overwhelmed mentally. I got so much going on, amen, it's about to kill me. 
Hallelujah. So some people, even with sickness and illness, and some people, they are broken because they feel unloved. Pastor, don't nobody love me. Amen, somebody. They feel unworthy. They're trying to do something, and no one's appreciate what they're doing, and even though they're giving their best, it don't seem to be good enough. And so, watch this, watch this. And the reason I know it, because we sleep, but we don't get no rest. You go through a season of when you get up in the morning, you're still tired. Even after being in the bed for six to eight hours, you wake up tired. It just means that you're broken. I'm going somewhere. When you wake up tired, deal with your brokenness. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, how do I deal with my brokenness? I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. If you are broke, all you need is a word. Don't, don't make me go, don't make me get deep. If you're broke, all you need is a word. A lot of folks who are broke, they get pills. A lot of people who are broke, they get a bottle. A lot of people who are broke, they get a blunt. But all you need is a word. You don't need pills. You don't need a counselor. You don't need a bottle. You don't need a blunt. All you need is a word, and the word will bring healing. There's a word for everything that you're going through. You just get a, get a word. Watch this, watch this. The people's lives were so messed up. They were so broken, um, something that my wife would call it, a, they was a hot mess. Somebody been there. Uh, we ain't always been fired by baptized, Holy Ghost fear, ready to run on for the Lord. We, we ain't always, we just, we just act like it, and then sometimes we act like it, but we don't live like it. Okay, so some of us still are hot mess. You just don't bring your hot mess to church, but some people see you on Monday. They see you on Tuesday. Some people see you in a club. Some people see you in another life. So some of us are still a hot mess. We just came on in the door, and I'm glad you did. Glory to God. Um, watch this. Watch this. Because God is saying to us, if I'm your God, if I'm your Lord, why don't you treat me like it? I'm giving you the word for you to live by, but you just don't want to live by it because you got other gods, you got other priorities. And God says, watch this, no, Pastor, don't go there. In the book of Malachi, it says, if I am your father, why don't you treat me like your father? If I'm your master and you my servant, why don't you treat me like I'm your master? Why are you giving all my due to somebody else? They, they didn't hear me. No, I want to I just read it. Because sometimes some, when they don't hear it, it's like, Pastor, just talking. But I'm going to give you a scripture to, to go along with it. Malachi, the first chapter, the sixth verse. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be your father, where is my honor? If I be your Master, where is my fear? Where is my reverence? Where is my respect? Only thing he's saying is, if you call me Lord, why don't you treat me like Lord? If you call me master, you're supposed to treat me like master. If you call me, um, I'm supposed to be your daddy, why don't you treat me like your daddy? I'm giving you everything you ask and you treat everybody else good. The children of Israel, he brought them out of Egypt and they went and gave a, a, a golden calf respect. He brought you out of some things and you went and gave your husband respect. He brought you out of things, you gave your spouse respect. He brought you out of some stuff, you gave your job, your boss, your bank account, your other stuff. He bringing you out of stuff and you giving everything else respect except God. He said, if I'm your Lord, if I'm your God, you ought to give me some respect. Give me some honor. Uh, there's, a, there's a rap out there who said, oh, put some respect on my name. Put some respect on it. All he's saying is, if I'm supposed to be your Lord, don't treat me like I ain't. If I'm doing all this for you, why are you giving my respect? Why are you giving my love? Why are you giving my priority to other things? Oh, ye children of Israel, because we backslide. We start going in a different direction. These children that they were speaking to during this time of Nehemiah had it made, but they start connecting themselves with other gods. Start connecting themselves with other priorities. And they begin to backslide into a state where they were deplorable. Where their lifestyle was just terrible. Where they're in a point where they were, it was like a disaster religiously because they weren't doing what God called them to do. And so now 
Nehemiah comes back on the scene. Nehemiah comes back on the scene and says, we got to restore you, bring you back to where you should have been, should have been in the right relationship with God. And so guess what he does? He calls the people together. I'm in verse 1. And they all gather together on one accord in one place. Watch this, watch this. This is, this is important. In the streets near the water gate. Pastor, why do you, they all gather together as one man. One man means they gather together in unity. You and I. Amen. They came together as one man in unity, and the devil will always fight against unity. Pastor, don't go there. Don't go there. The devil will always fight against unity because that's why we come together. But the devil understands that there's power in unity, so he always brings discord to keep you out of line with one another so you don't get the power that God wants you to have. We are better together, we are stronger together, but when we are against one another, then the devil is on high because they said they can't get nowhere, they can't do nothing. Even men who wanted to, um, to build a tower, the Bible says that God had to distinguish their language from another because they had a mind to do it and begin to build a tower of Babel. When you get on one accord, there is nothing that can be held against you, away from you. So even now, he says, you need unity to come together because the devil trying to throw some. I didn't do this. The devil did it. Oh, cool. When you get mad with one another, don't get mad with one another. Understand that it's, it's really not her. It's really not him. It's the devil that's doing. Oh, my God. You, you mad with your neighbor because you think she, she talking about you. You mad with your neighbor because you think she, she acting up. But it's really not your neighbor. It's really that spirit of the devil. It's really that satanic spirit that's operating that we got to come against. Did you not just hear the song say, we, we, I need you, you need me? We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Pray with me. I, I won't do what? I won't hurt you with the words out of my mouth. I'm not going to do anything, but if we're not careful, the devil will use your mouth to hurt somebody. The devil will use your activities to come against somebody because the devil don't want to see you come together because that's unity and that's power. Don't tell me he won't use you because most of us done been used. Don't tell me he won't, he won't, he won't get close to you so he can get next to somebody else. The devil has a way of trying to trick you into thinking that it's okay. And you say, oh, I ain't going to let nobody treat me like that. Oh, I ain't going to let the devil treat me like that. We got to, ooh, we got to grow up. Um, let me, what I want to say, grow up. We got to mature. We got to mature. Uh, when we mature, we will fight for unity. Amen, somebody. When we mature, we'll check our own self. You're trying to check everybody else, and you're the one that needs to be checked. So when we mature, we'll make sure I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't say nothing wrong. You may get hurt, but it ain't going to be by me. When it comes down to it, if it falls apart, I'm not going to be the one to do it. Not by my mouth, not by my words, not by my gossip, not by my attitude. I'm not going to be the one to break it up. When the devil come, I'm going to pray for you. When the, when the devil come, I'm going to pray for me. When the devil come, sometimes I'm going to just shut my mouth to make sure I don't say nothing that's going to hurt me and you. But now we so bold, we, I'm going to tell them how I feel about it. Check yourself. You ain't got to tell everybody that you... Amen. Because now the devil using you because now you got to express yourself. There are seasons where we just need to be quiet. Now, they're, they're not seasons where we need to be a fool now because you do need to address some things when it's out of order. There are ways to address it that does not call, hey, I'm going to check you if you're wrong, but I'm going to check you in love. And before I check you, I'm going to check myself. God. Okay. I say that because the devil is the one who's trying to bring discord between us and we don't even see it. Pastor, don't stay there too long because you're about to hurt somebody. The devil is the one who's trying to bring discord in the choir, bring discord in the deacons, bring discord between the pastor and the congregation. The devil is the one doing all the work, and you tell me they show you. All you got to do is stop talking and start praying. 
Stop talking and start praying. And then you will see the power of God. He says, bring me the word. And he gets the word, uh, Ezra the priest, the scribe, gets the word and he goes out into the street with it. This is powerful. Usually we save as long as we're in these walls. We'll preach the word as long as we're in these walls. We'll read the word as long as we're in these walls. But what are you going to do when we get outside there? They said they take the word and they take it to the street. That's important because your word shouldn't just be in the house. Your word shouldn't just be when you come to church, you to save this person around. But when you get out in the world, you ain't got a word. When you get on your job, you ain't got a word. When you get in the street, you ain't got a word. Take the word to the street. Get it outside of these walls and make it work outside. Glory to God. Pastor, push on, push on because you're about to hurt somebody. Ezra bring this book, Ezra bring this law, Ezra bring, um, at that time there was only five books. It's called the Law of Moses. The Law of Moses is the, five, the first five books of the Bible. It's the Pentateuch. It's also called the Torah. Good part about that is that it helps us to understand what God was doing in that season. And so they bring the book up and he began reading the book. Ezra begins reading and watch this. They said Ezra read from the time the sun came up till midday. We read from 7 o'clock to 7.30. The Bible says he read for five or six hours and folks stood up and listened to him read. We relax. We chill out. If, 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 we, if pastor don't look at, look at you directly, you will scoot all the way under that chair. I done seen folk got so relaxed, I thought they were laying out. Amen? But the Bible says they were attentive to the word. And a lot of times, we are not attentive to the word. We're in church, but we're not attentive. Pastor, don't go there. Please don't go there. We're, we're, we're listening, but we're not listening. Sometimes we're looking, but we're not listening. Sometimes we don't, uh, and then that's why I said, we're, we're even with our children, um, they're, they're in church, but they're doing a whole lot of other things. They, they're playing um, crossword puzzles and Video games and patty cake and chase the dragon. And they're old enough, watch this, they're old enough for, under, to, for understanding. The Bible said it brought men, women, and all those who could understand. And so that means children who are enough, had enough knowledge to understand the word. We bring our children to church and let them go to sleep. It's okay if they're toddlers, but by the time you get old enough to understand, you ought to sit up and listen. We ain't that deep. Amen, somebody. And so I want you to understand that they were attentive. Nobody allowed the word to bore them. God Almighty. No, no, nobody allowed the word to put them to sleep. Nobody allowed their they cell phone and their other devices to pull them away from the word. Nobody allowed um, running back and forth to the bathroom or to the water fountain to pull them away from the word. Nobody allowed the lobby or the parking lot to pull them away from the word. If we're not careful, we'll find everything in the world to do but be attentive to the word. We come to church and we start doing temporal stuff. And the word is what's important. Well, while I'm here, let me go on and do this since I'm at church. No, 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 no. Do that on another day. <laughs> at Bible study, let's do Bible study. Mm, mm. Let, me, let me go on because y'all y'all not going to like this. The people was broken, but it brought them the word. The people was broken, and they brought them the word. And then the Bible says, watch this in verse 4, and Ezra stood up on a pulpit of wood so he can give forth the word. And y'all thought we just started building these in the, new, in the new day. A pulpit is just a, a, a high place for people to hear, for people to see. Because if I stood at the same level you stood at, the people behind you may not be able to hear the word. So they built, that's why Jesus went out on a boat. To be elevated so folks could see and could hear. Not because he just wanted to get away from them. And so we stand in a pulpit uh, on a platform so people can hear and see. Because somebody behind you may not be able to get the word. I thank God. Ooh. Platform. They built a platform for the word. Which means they made preparation 
for the word. The hard part is let's move into a spiritual nature. How many of you have a platform for receiving the word? How many of you prepare, build your spiritual platform before you get to church? Or are you coming up in the parking lot cussing and fussing straight from work, or listening to all kind of crazy stuff, and then come in and want me to preach you happy? Did you not build a platform and prepare yourself for the word? Did you not build a platform and get ready to receive the word so that when you come in, you are... They built a platform, meaning they prepared for the word to go forward. But what good is a platform if the people not prepared to receive it? So as they built a platform to receive the, for the word to go forward, you got to build a spiritual platform in your life to get ready for the word. When I leave the house, I put on me some spiritual stuff, and I'm just, can I say jamming? I don't want y'all to think I'm jamming the crazy stuff, but, I, but, I, but I'm jamming all the way to the, to the church. I'm getting my mind ready. I'm, I'm, I'm making my platform ready to give the word. And then I'm praying and saying, well, God, what would you have the people to hear? Even though I wrote my notes and even though I prepared, the Holy Ghost, you go to work. Somebody may have came in for a word, for a specific word. And so, God, if they're looking for that word, even if it ain't in my notes, give it to them. So I come in and I prepare my platform to give you the word. But if you don't come in on a platform ready to receive the word, we're going to miss each other. You have to be on a spiritual platform ready to receive the word, expecting God will say what you need him to say. When you leave your job, God, I'm going to the church to get a word. God, 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 whatever he say tonight, touch this area in my life because this is what I need. But when you come in and say, just give me what you got. I don't know how many of y'all go to the doctor and just say, give me what you got. I guarantee you, you go in there for a specific reason. So he can meet a specific need. But you come to church, come on, pastor, give me a word. But if you had prepared your spiritual platform to receive a word, whether I'm talking about people being built up, whether I'm talking about walls being built up, you may have a financial need, you may have a, a illness, you may have something, you may have tumors in your life, and God will cause it to deal with whatever you're dealing with in your life. Glory to God. Woo, a platform. We go farther because it says Ezra, when he stood up to teach the word, he had A, B, C, D, E, F, G on his left hand side. I'm in verse 4. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P on his right side. I'm just calling out the names of the prophets that I can't spell or pronounce. But he had six prophets or other word carriers on his left. And he had seven of them on his right. Pastor, why is that significant? Because the only folk you want to hear is me. Don't get mad when pastor ain't preaching. Don't get, tell my name, pastor preaching tonight. I ain't coming. Pastor teaching tonight. I'm not the only one to teach the word of God. Even in this time frame, he said he had 13 other teachers. 13 other preachers. They were team teaching because he ain't the only word carrier. That's why the folk be, uh, uh, pastor who preaching son? I be wanting to cuss. Does it matter? As long as they give in the word of God, don't come to hear me. Come to hear the word. If you're coming to hear me, you're coming for the wrong reason. I'm coming to get the word. I'm coming to get the word. The word is what's important. And we got preachers who know how to preach. We got teachers who know how to teach. But they ain't my favorite. Uh, um, who gonna, Pastor, who going to be a, oh, I ain't coming. I don't want to hear her. What? I wish they treated you that way. When you get the microphone, you, you, you doing your solo tonight. Oh, I ain't coming to hear her. Amen? We ought to come because God put it in us to hear the word, not necessarily that particular person. If they couldn't preach, they well, I wouldn't let them get up. Now, they may not preach like everybody else, but God gave them a word. They might not be the best preacher. <laughs> let me just confess. I know I ain't. But I give you what God gave me. And I give it to you at the best of my ability. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. But what I'm trying to say is, Ezra, even though he was a preacher, he was the prophet, he's the scribe, he's the priest, he had 13 other folk who was ministering the word of God. Hallelujah. That's, that's liberation for me. That, that, that ought to bless somebody because it tells me that he ain't the only one that's hearing from God. 
He ain't the only one. Because there are some folk that I'll meet your need, but there are some folks who need will be met by others. You may have a word in your bosom or in your belly to bless somebody else, but you're saying, well, Pastor Whitaker preaching. Well, what did God give you to give somebody? You don't have to be a preacher to preach. Amen. Let me push a little forward. Let me push a little forward. Watch this. After all of these folks are preaching and carrying the word of God, he begins to say this. Why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Why are you so sad? He goes even farther to say when this word of God is coming, you know why they got sad? You know why they start crying? You know why they would start mourning? Because they were living in sin. And when the word of God hits you, it ought to make you say, ouch. And somebody ought to go ahead and say, ouch. When, 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 when the word of God comes, it will make you say, ouch. Because guess what? The word of God is true, and it will highlight those areas in your life that's messed up and need to be corrected. The word of God comes for correction. And they realize that 70 years we've been in this desert doing wrong and now the word of God is being preached to us and we got to get it right. So it hurts. I read God's word sometimes and tears just run out of my face because I realize that I'm not the man he called me to be. I realize that I made some mistakes in life. That, and if it don't hurt you that way, then you got to check yourself. There's too much pride. There's too much. Because the hard part is God is trying to build us up and when the word gets through making you say, ouch, Guess what else it'll do? It'll make you say, oh, glory to God. It, it, it'll make you say, ouch, at one point, and then it'll hit you again and make you say, oh, glory to God. Because the word is good. Sometime it'll step on your toe, and sometime it'll put your toe on a platform and lift you up. But you got to be prepared for however the word come, the word is true. Woo. Y'all almost make me back up there. Because... I felt somebody saying, life has been so hard, Pastor, and I can't get to where I want to be. But don't let life pull you out so far that you forget who you are. I don't know who that was for, but you, but, but you need to receive that. Hey, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Wake up talking about, I don't know how I got here. You, you, you ain't the only one. It'll make you forget who you are. Because you get caught up in situations, you get caught up in life, and then you know who you are, but sometimes we forget who we are. Wake up talking, when did I stoop down this low? I know I'm better than this. But I realize I wind up in a situation and God won't allow you to stay there. God just trying to bring you out, but you have to identify where you are so you can come out of it. Sometimes love or lust will draw you into a situation and you forget who you are. No good way I shouldn't be dating him or her. That's what they're talking about. Good girls like bad boys. Next thing you know, you out there drinking and <laughs> yeah, other stuff. Cause you trying, yeah, cause you trying, you trying to be in love with him, and, and he turning you out. I watch these shows talking about what you'll do for love. I, 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 for, yeah, what you do for my man. Yeah, I'd have I'd, I'd killed him. What you'll do for my man. I ain't going to do nothing for you. Drag you to church, get you some Jesus. Robbing folks, murdering folks, doing all kind of crazy stuff for my man. You know who my man is? What will you do for him? Will you lay down your life for him? Will you serve him? Will you go out and kill the devil for him? <sighs> oh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to help us because God is trying to restore us. God is trying to revive us. God is trying to build us up in some areas. And you thinking it's about a wall. And God said, it's about you. You are the children that Nehemiah was talking to. We are the broken people that he's trying to restore. And we're saying, Pastor, I ain't broke. I'm strong. And then you go home and get medicated. And go home and call a counselor. God said, I got all your answers right here in this word. Go home and roll up a blunt. I don't know why I keep going. I don't know why I keep going. It's just in the air. It's just, it's just in the air. Marijuana will not save you. It might calm you down. But it will not save you. Uh, uh, a great goose won't save you. It might make you 
Okay, Patron won't save you. They said, Great Goose, Pastor, where you go? Yeah, but Patron, it won't save you. It might make you feel good for a season, but guess what? When you wake up, you still broke. She might be fine and look good, but when you wake up, you still broke. He might be all of that and a bag of chip, but when you wake up, you still broke. You need a word. Woo. I, I, I want to pick it up and kiss it. Because <laughs> you, you, need, you need a word. We're trying to get everything except for the word, and the word is what we need. The word is liberation. The word is power, and you need the word. Late at night when you're thinking crazy, get up and read the word. That, that's why I said, well, pastor, why you always reading? I got stuff that I need. And the stuff that I need comes from the word. But, okay, okay, somebody, you, I don't want you to think it works that way because, watch this, you can't read yourself out of your circumstance. You can grab, you can grab this word and read it all you want to, but it will not read you out of your circumstance. But watch this, watch this, watch this. Even easier than that. You can read it into peace. I, I can't read myself out of it, but while I'm reading, I can get some peace. While I'm reading, I can get some strength. While I'm reading, I can get some joy. I won't get out of my circumstance, but I'll have peace while I'm in the circumstance. I'll have joy while I'm in the circumstance. I'll have strength. While... It ain't going to get you out. But it'll bring you some peace while you're in it. It won't get you out, but it'll bring you some joy, some strength while you're in it. Well, Pastor, I'm going to go home and read my word and I'm going to come. No, you ain't. You ain't going to come out. Reading it will not bring you out. But when you apply it, you got to apply what you read. And the application of the word will bring you out. You can't just go get a job. You got to apply for the job. And the application that you put in for the job will get you the job. You got to apply the word of God. And when I apply that word to my life, then things begin to happen. Then my payday comes. I'm, I'm done, y'all. He stood up for to read the word. Last point. And I wonder why he stood up to read the word except for the fact that it seemed to be customary. But even Jesus... When he went to the temple on the Sabbath, stood up for the read the word. That's why we do it customary today. When the word is read, we stand up for the reading the word. Because Jesus had so much respect for the word, he stood up to read of himself. And if Jesus respected himself and the word so much so that he stood up, why do we sit down on the word? So when the word is written, God on my read, we all stand up to respect. The word of God. Hallelujah. That's in Luke 4 and 16. Glory to God. I, I, I'm, I'm done. The last thing I'll say to you guys is you got to make yourself available to read God's word because the word is what's going to give you deliverance. The word is what's going to bring you power. The word is what's going to make it work. The Bible says, watch this. Watch what the people did. After they had heard the word, and we, we think this is just a ghibli saying, the Bible said the people said, Amen. And amen. God. After the people heard the word, after Ezra had stood up and preached for five or six hours, the people said, amen. And amen. The Bible said they lifted up their hands, beginning to give God praise. And then some of them fell down, put their face to the ground and worshiped. And they did that not because of Ezra, but because of the word and what the word will do. And they said, oh, after I said, ouch, now I can worship. After the word hurt me and brought me deliverance, now I can give God some praise. I went from ouch to ah, Lord, I love you. Glory to God. How many of you can go from ouch to loving the Lord? How many of you can go from ouch to telling God I appreciate you? How many of you can go from ouch to telling God, God, thank you for bringing me out. God, thank you for the deliverance. How many of you can go from ouch to telling God, God, I love you? And if it wasn't for you showing me my mistakes, showing me where I had went wrong, showing me where I was broken, I'd still be broken. But God, thank you for mending me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. And then the very last verse says this. Don't you cry again. 
This is a day that the Lord has made. Don't, don't, don't cry no more. This is a good day. A day to serve and worship the Lord. And he tells them, um, not one more tear. Wipe it up. Close it up. Stop mourning. Stop groaning. Stop, stop making things seem like it's bad. Because watch this. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. That, that's, how, that's how Ezra closed it out. He said, after all that he said, God has showed you and put you in mourning, put you in crying, put you in tears, made you feel sorry for how wretched you were. Now he's brought you out. Now give him praise. No more whining, no more mourning, no more sorrow because he has given you liberty. He set you free. Now the joy of the Lord is my strength. I thank God for that because most folks think your joy is your strength. But it says the joy of the Lord is my strength. I have no strength in myself, but I joy in him. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody will catch that later. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 2 says it something like this. Who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross. <laughs> what What joy? It gave him joy to endure the cross. It gave him joy to redeem us from sin. It gave him joy that he might lay down his life that you might have life. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And now I can sit back and say, for that same joy, for that same joy, the joy of the Lord, I have strength. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. I feel myself getting stronger as I preach. I feel my, I, I feel my strength coming as I for the joy of the Lord is my strength. So when I'm down and out, when I'm troubled, when I'm broken, I don't have to think about me. I think about the joy of the Lord. When everybody's talking about you and things ain't going your way, don't think about you. Don't think about your problem. Think about the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is mine. Woo! Um, <laughs> you don't feel yourself getting stronger just thinking about how good God is? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's that joy that gives us strength. Give God one more great big hand clap of praise all over the building on tonight. Amen. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, we love on you on tonight. <sighs> yes, God. Yes, God. Give me the word. Because the word works. Give, give me the word. Because that's what I need in my life. Stop giving me stuff. And give me the word. I need something that works. And the word. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word works. Give me the word. Go ahead and bless the Lord on tonight. Amen. Go ahead and bless the Lord on tonight. Hallelujah. If there's somebody under my listening here, amen, who don't know the Lord and forgiveness of your sins, this is a word for you. Hallelujah. In Romans 10 and 9, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, that shall be saved. That's the word you need to give your life to Christ, to come over on the Lord's side, that you might have life. God, we thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary. Give it up your life that we may have life. So we bless your name. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you want to give your life to Christ today, that way you don't have to cry no more. You don't have to mourn no more. You don't have to be sad no more. He'll give you joy. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Amen. Give God some praise. Just a couple of quick announcements. Amen. We know that you have downloaded our PHMBC app. And we want to make sure that when you go to the app, if you would, please, ma'am, please, sir, hit the give button so that you can continue to sow into ministry. Give your tithe and your offering to the Lord. Amen. Not because we're asking you to, but because the Bible admonishes us to be faithful in our tithe and offer that God may open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. So we thank you for what you do for the Lord. We thank you for what you've done.
and we thank you for what you'll continue to do. Even those of you who may not be a part of this ministry, amen, we ask that you continue to sow seeds because when you sow seeds into good ground, we know that those seeds will come up for you again, amen. So we're praying that God will continue to bless you, strengthen you, and give you your desires of your heart. The last announcement we have is that on this Saturday, this Saturday, the 19th of February, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, our Elevation Project, amen, it will be in full effect. We're going to be over in the um, Spurling Fellowship Hall, amen, and we're going to be having our PSA screening, blood pressure checks. Please, ma'am, please, sir, grab a flyer, pass that information out to anyone that you meet, amen. It's for men 40 years and older, men 40 years and older, but if you got a husband, if you got a brother, if you have a son, a daddy, a granddaddy, an uncle, Please, women, grab them and bring them out. Bring, bring them out. A lot of times, men are embarrassed about our health conditions and we don't get the help that we need. So we want to encourage you. Even though this is a love month, the month of February, uh, Valentine's Day, show love by giving life. Bring your husband, your uncle, your cousin, your friend, your significant other out to this event. 10 o'clock Saturday morning. And now when you bring them out, for every man that screams, for every man that screams, you'll get a free haircut and a free ham. So we want, to, we want to just make sure that that information is going out, amen. If you may be too young to come, amen, please share that information with somebody else. Uh, see Brother Ron Bell, Deacon Ron Bell, for any additional information. Um, uh, we need your support. We need your support. I want to ask you, please do all you can that this may be a wonderful, wonderful, successful event. Hallelujah. Well, if you enjoyed the Lord, would you stand to your feet and give God one more great big hand of praise, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the word, give me the word, give me the word, give me the word. Father God, we thank you for tonight. God, we thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have heard. We pray, God, that you'll continue to tabernacle with us even when we leave this place. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. Continue to bless us, Lord God. Continue to love on us and cause us to love on one another. So God, we bless you and we do thank you. It is in your daughter's son, Jesus' name, that we do pray. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you on Saturday.